everybody, my name is Bob and this is the Robbinsville Hydroponic Farm. As you can tell, the farm is literally a shipping container. The first section that we'll talk about is our seedling section. This was just seeded today. We get a flat, fill it up with these peat plugs. This is actually peat moss and cocoa shells compressed. So once the tray is completely filled with these and the seeds, we then water it for about 12 minutes. Then they move down here under the humidity domes for one week. You can just see how small that seed is. Oh, that's so cute. So does it stay in this plug throughout the entire, like? Their the entire plug? life cycle. This is kind of like their home forever um, because the plug will go with them as we harvest. Is there a particular reason why you chose peat moss? So, I'm gonna be honest, yeah. <laughs> the farm came like that. Through my personal experience with hydroponics, yeah. um, I've used rock wool, I've used the cocoa uh, pebbles, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, so I've used those. Out of all of them, I find this to be the best. Okay. Um, but that could also be because when I was doing it back at home, yeah. just like you, <laughs> I didn't have like high technology to help me out. So in this setting, it works great. I also really like them because of this little tiny hole yeah. <laughs> that makes it so much easier. After one week, they move up to the next level. So essentially this is two weeks old. Then they are going to move to here where they are now three weeks old. Because we only grow leafy greens and herbs here in the farm, yeah. it's three weeks. Okay. So, now I do grow basil. This is four weeks old. They just do better yeah. if I give them a little bit extra time before they start to hang vertically to help them. Just like, come on, you got this little yeah. guy. And then they go into the towers. So for each one of these sections, we have NPK, yeah. calcium nitrate, pH down, pH up. NPK and calcium nitrate. Like I tell everybody, it's like Batman and Robin okay. <laughs> together. Batman and Robin fight crime together, NPK and calcium nitrate fight hunger. Yay! So, hey! <laughs> Luckily for us, our pH levels that come in from our city water, because that's what we use, the pH level is like perfect for oh, us, so we better. don't ever have to really use our pHs. But of course, we always use the nutrients. So, we have four containers for the seedling tank, which is right below here. That's 40 gallons of water. And then four containers for the main tank and that's 140 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool about it is they automatically dose the tanks yeah. as needed. Okay. So I don't have to do anything, which makes yes. my life so much easier. <laughs> and what's extra cool about all of that yeah. is I can see it right here on my phone. Oh, well, that's awesome. <laughs> so there's hey. us. <laughs> Cute. And then I could see the temperature, the humidity, the CO2 levels, and then the main tank and the seedling tank, and where their nutrient levels are, as well as pHs and temperatures. I love that. I wish my closet had that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It makes life so much easier. So I can be anywhere in the country, in the world, and I can see what's going on That's here inside of our farm. It's so very comforting. It's, it makes it great. After they grow here in the nursery section, they then come behind me into this main growing section. We have all the plants in these towers. There is 10 heads of lettuce per each of these towers, yeah. and there's 256 towers. So how many heads of lettuce are we growing? 2,560. Yes, yeah, very good. <laughs> That's how many heads of lettuce we're growing here right now inside of this farm. So if you think about it, the outside of this farm so it was only 40 feet long. So we're growing a lot of heads of lettuce here on the farm. And every single week, we harvest anywhere between 350 to 400 heads of lettuce. Okay. Every single week. This will actually be ready to harvest next week. Okay. So um, it's actually gonna, by next week, it'll be a little bit bigger. Yeah. So just about like there. And it'll be ready to harvest, and that'll feed about two people. Now all of our heads of lettuce here, we don't sell them to the public, we don't have a CSA program right now, but what we do is actually donate everything back to the seniors here at the Senior Center. So the farm is located at the Robinsville Senior Center, 
so all the heads of lettuce literally go from here to there into the seniors' bellies. <laughs> And then whatever's left over goes to nurse street friends. But to be able to give back to the community every single week, lots of lettuce is incredible. <laughs> so this is actually our basil towers. I keep um, 12 of these towers back here because they're just a little fun um, thing to grow. And it's also super fun for the seniors because it's something different other than lettuce. So this was actually just harvested last week. <laughs> so they were cut all the way back to the lowest leaves. And as you can tell, they are taking off like rockets already. So there's lots of new growth as you can see here. So it's pretty incredible how these plants can bounce back so quickly and continue to grow. So in probably another two to three weeks, I'll come back in and I'll put these and the seniors will have more basil. So it's super yummy. So you keep the same base plants, you just keep harvesting them? Yes and I do this up to three times I find to be the best. Okay. You can get away with four times, but um, that's when they start to get a little bit leggier and not as full. Mm -hmm. Like I'll cut them way back like this yeah. and they'll just rejuvenate, regrow, and then I'll harvest them again. So here we have a tower. So let's just say um, from seed to harvest, it's eight weeks, about eight to nine weeks for us here on the farm. Then we take the tower, put them here on the table, we pull out the heads of lettuce, we come through, we clean the tower, and then we transplant. So you have this plastic outer shell. So this is the tower itself. So they call these usually a Zipro tower. Then we have two pieces of styrofoam in here. And then going down the middle of the tower, which goes all the way to the bottom, is the wicking strip. Our wicking strip kind of looks grody right now. Yeah. Um, I know it looks gross and I know some of the farmers out there might be like, that needs to be changed. Yeah. Yes, it does need to be changed, <laughs> but what's great about it and it's still working fine yeah. and we don't have that many insects in here is that it has all those beneficial bacteria and microorganisms for our lettuces to grow nice, big, healthy, and strong because the cleaner the wicking strip is mm -hmm. and the more newer it is, yeah. I find that the heads of lettuce don't get nearly as big. Okay. And I think that's because of the lack of moisture it can hold, mm -hmm. as well as the lack of nutrients that are already built up into that wicking strip, if that makes sense. No, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So you're actively trying to have like a living component to your farm besides the lettuce. Exactly. Okay. So it's literally its own ecosystem. Like, when it goes, time for transplanting you take the plug and you're going to essentially take the wicking strip and you're going to pull it towards you along with the styrofoam and you're going to just place it in and it's going to be at a slight diagonal facing up in this case towards the door <laughs> which is behind you and you just let it go it's pinching in the plug so by now you're probably wondering what's going on with this pink color inside of this farm. We use a 5 to 1 ratio. So for every 5 red lights we have one blue light. And study has shown and Freight Farms has actually done studies on this and suggest this and the reason why they use this is because the red light is what stimulates the leaf growth. So especially when you're growing heads of lettuce you want the leaves to grow nice, big, and full. And then the blue light is what stimulates the stem growth. So because they're lettuces, you don't want a giant stem coming up with like a little bit of a top. No, you want a little stem with lots and lots of leaves. We decided to put these reflectors um, here on the farm to help bounce back the light from going in, going back to the plants versus coming out here. Um, so essentially, just, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, a window curtain yeah. <laughs> with like a mirror fill. And this also helps with keeping the lights inside. Yeah. Also with our lights, we actually use those as a heating source. Okay. So we do not have any heat in here. Oh. The lights are our heating source. So during the winter time, which is this time of year, um, these lights work a little bit more um, because it's trying to keep it warm in here. It's all kind of like a learning yeah. process, which is really cool with hydroponics especially. So when you're with these plants every day or every single week, you're like, oh, what can I do to make it more efficient? What can I do to make them grow better? What can I do to make them happier? You know, play more music or talk to them. 
when it comes to reflecting the light, adding in some extra fans in the back up on the ceiling to make that movement of the air, everything can make a difference, yeah. even with the wicking trips. Maybe leaving them a little bit more grody, yeah. it helps. <laughs> so it all really depends on what your plans need. You got them. So is it just you on the farm or are there other people that are working there? So it's just me as the hydroponic farm coordinator. However, I cannot do it alone. Our farm is ran by volunteers as well as myself. So I oversee the entire process of the farm. But my job is to coordinate volunteers to come in and to do the harvests, to do the transplanting, the seeding. I allow them, if they're really, really passionate, I have them come in and do the calibrations with me. Is it like high school students? It's like, what's the age range of the people that are helping? It's everybody. Everybody. Which is super cool. I've had middle schoolers come in. I've had high schoolers, parents. I've had senior citizens come into the farm, which is super cool because we're located on the senior center property. But yeah, it's welcome to everybody. Yeah.